right back. Todd Schultz. He's a grizzled veteran stage manager of countless Jerry Springer shows. He's broken up fights between some of the most dangerous guests in television history. Tom McNamara. He's the beloved stage manager of Talk Soup. He's guzzled kegs of beer and has managed to laugh at some of the lamest jokes in talk show history. Woohoo! Today, thanks to the Federal Stage Manager Exchange Program, they're going to switch jobs. Is the grass really greener on the other side? Find out on today's Talk Soup. Woohoo! Why would you mess around with his life? So basically, you're using my talk show to find your cat. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah! Hello, and welcome to the Talk Soup Freakly Wrap-Up. I'm John Henson. Well, I am very excited because Talk Soup is participating in the new Federal Stage Manager Exchange Program. Oh. Yeah. That's right. Stage managing the show for us today is Jerry Springer, stage manager slash security thug, Todd Schultz. Todd, how's it going, man? Oh, pretty good so far. Everyone's been real nice here. Oh, oh Lord. my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Are you okay? Man. Are you okay? I, God, I think it'd be safer happened? for the rest of the show if everyone just stays out of my peripheral vision, all right? Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. Laura, You're for right? God's sake, don't sneak up on Todd like that. Just asking for trouble. Okay, right now, let's check in live via satellite with our own beloved Tom McNamara, who's doing Todd's job in Chicago. Are you there, Tom? Hey, gang. I'm right outside Jerry Springer's office. I'm going to go in there and get a little debriefing before the big shows, and he's going to tell me what I need to know and what I have to look out for and everything like that. So come on inside. We'll go meet Jerry. Hey, hey Jerry. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Me. Yeah, I'm excellent. You. Thanks a lot for letting me be part of the stage manager exchange program here. Well, you know, it, uh, we looked at a lot of applications, uh -huh. and uh, you seemed uh, the most needy. Oh, okay, so, great. Yeah, so, we, yeah, we thought you'd be perfect. Hey, nice shirt. Hey, thanks a lot. I yeah. kind of fired it from your wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> See, Jerry yeah. Springer. <laughs> so, um, you know what you're going to be doing? Yeah, I'm going to go out there and mix it up with the gang, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, when you're up there, you know, you just kind of, you, you stay in your seat, you know. Okay. If things look like they're getting out of hand, then get up there. Okay. Okay. Now, um, if they're women fighting, right? Um, well, if they're real attractive. Let them go for a while. Oh, okay, great, yeah. super. Yeah, sit back and enjoy the action. Oh yeah, you know, clothes we, we get ripped off. Be happy. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay, you shouldn't be ripping your clothing off though. Try to have some restraint. Okay. Okay. Thanks for all the advice. I think I got it now, and I'm ready to do the shows. Okay. Well, good luck to you. And you know, as soon as the show's over, go home. Okay, I will do that. And rest up? No, okay. just go home. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Bye. Right, Tom. Good job. We'll be checking back in with him again later. Coming up on the big show, a kinky clown makes whoopee with a rubber chicken. We'll test the durability of Roy Clark's hair. Plus, everybody gets boozed up. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh, how sad. You know, they, they've been under a lot of stress lately. First up... All right, fellas, bring out our first dancer of the evening. Her name is Brandy, and she's going to delight you with her dirty dancing. So how about it, fellas? Yeah. Let them know you care. Oh, yeah. She's going to treat you right. So treat her right, and then treat yourself right by watching this Jerry Springer highlight. for the tantalizing moves of the tempting Tony.
Remember, gals, Tony is not a salaried employee and relies solely on your generosity. <laughs> Monday on Jerry, run for your lives! It's the attack of the ex-lovers. Yelling, screaming, hair pulling. They'll do anything for revenge. Warning, no one will be seated during the shocking chair tossing scene. It's the attack of the ex-lovers. Rated S for shocking. If I ever get a trout stuck in my butt, I sure hope Mark Brown isn't the doctor on duty. He's the kind of guy who remembers such events and writes about them in books like Emergency, True Stories from the Nation's ERs. So think about that the next time you have something stuck in your butt. Here's Dr. Tattletale on Home and Family. Let's get into some bizarre stories, because well, the other... One of the things that happens, and I got so many uh, letters back from doctors around the country about this, kids... When they come to the emergency room, they like to put things in their nose, beans in their nose, corn in the ear, Lego toys, and so on. But when they grow up, they like to change orifices. Mm. Mm. And the things that people have hidden away in their bodies was, is unbelievable. Like what? Give us an example. Well, I think some of my, I mean, phones and Coke bottles and, Mom. and, uh, but my, two of my favorites is the guy that came in with seven Barbie doll heads that he'd torn off and hidden away. And another guy, Minnesota, <laughs> where but Minnesota would this happen? Came in with a trout. A trout. Minnesota? Minnesota, yeah, well. Maybe been ice fishing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, what do you know? Wait a minute. Somebody comes into the emergency room with that. How do you handle a person like that? I mean, do you... Do you make eye contact with them? Do you talk to them? Do you use gloves? Do you, do you, do you use gloves. You use gloves? Yeah. Funny? Perhaps. But not when it happens to you. That was one of the most horrifying experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Horrifying, I tell you. There's only one way to deal with that behavior. You gotta nip it in the bud. Nip it, I said. Nip it in the bud. Hey, thank you, Mr. Limpet. Monday on Home and Family, author Helena Hacker Rosenberg gives women tips on how to find Mr. Right. And with a name like Hacker Rosenberg, you know she's seen a lot of action. Mm. In Gary's opinion, there's nothing more annoying than a maid who's always yammering on about her emotional needs. He's looking for an old-fashioned wife. The kind of woman who'll devote her entire life to pleasing him and him only. If not for love, then at least for a green card. Up next, the author of Your Bride is in the Mail mouths off on the Lisa Show. Women I have found feel, feel that they should have a career. They should do all of these things to find themselves. Oh, and by the way, in the process, also be a wife. Well, I got news for you folks. My mother was a wife, and it was a full-time job. Absolutely. And my grandmother was a wife, and it was a full-time job. And that's the kind of wife I want. He says and, here, and, 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 it ought to be enough. Ladies, ladies, let me say my this. Mother. You can be whatever you want to be. That's okay. I don't mind that. But no thank you. I don't want to marry you. Thank you very much. Because, 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 guess what, Lisa? I look at you and I see a very beautiful package. But inside it, there's a man. And frankly, I don't want Scoff if you must, but guess what? There really is a man inside of Lisa. Can you believe it? And what's inside of him? Why, it's a trout! Oh, of course. Monday, Lisa screens videotape of criminals caught in the act. Check out the footage that helped the crooks to the slammer. Take a date to the Keenan Show, and you'll get a few laughs and just possibly a little tongue. If you don't believe me, then ask Miguel. He's an audience member who volunteered for Keenan's patented What's Licking You contest. Up next, he gets slobbered on by a grade-A Jersey heifer. Let's bring out our lovely lady. Well, we just want you to taste, we just want you to taste good, that's all. Okay. You ready, Miguel? Okay. You, you want to take a guess? That was two different things, all right? No, it's the same one. What do you think it is? Something with a scratchy tongue. <laughs> but, what did you say? Iguana? An iguana. Um, 
No, it's a little bit bigger than an iguana. How about we give it one more try? <laughs> okay. Here's your last chance. You ready? A llama? <laughs> Well, how about, how about we let you see? <laughs> wow, that guy took a licking but kept on ticking. Speaking of which, that reminds me. Let's check back in with Tom, who's reporting to us live from the Springer Show. Tom, are you there, Tom? Oh, oh my yeah. Lord. Have my, get her, get her, Tom. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's getting right into the swing of things. Oh, Tommy, way to go, boy. Hey, my Lord. Yeah. Todd, is it always like that? Uh, it's usually worse. Yeah. Wow. Uh, worse. Oh, I out. hope his insurance is up to Oh, look out, Tom. She's got a shoe. Oh, you, you wow. Know we, you, hey. you know we get to keep those. Oh, you get to keep the shoes? Yeah. Oh, hey, not a bad deal, I guess. Tom just snatched that shoe right out of her hand. We'll check back in with him later once things have settled down. Monday, Keenan welcomes comedian John Henton. That's Henton, folks, not Henson. I'm not doing a promo for myself. Nay, I'm inviting you to enjoy the interview with John Henton, former star of Living Single. Oh. Well, you can see how it can be kind of confusing. <laughs> yeah. Coming up later on the weekly wrap-up, we'll meet a woman who only makes whoopee with circus clowns. Plus, a former Barker beauty bears her buttocks. But first, anybody seen Doris's pussycat? Mm -hmm. The cat disappeared in Carl Gables. And we've done everything we can to get it back. And Let I me show that... the cat to the can people we, at home. Can we zoom, zoom in? Yeah, zoom in on the cat. So basically, you're using my talk show to find your cat. After an Welcome back to the Sioux. This week we're participating in the talk show stage manager exchange program. Joining us is Todd from the Jerry Springer Show. Yep, there he is. Moving on. 15-year-old <laughs> Heather didn't want to move away from her 16-year-old boyfriend Brian. So the two of them devised a plan. They'd have unprotected sex, she'd get pregnant, and then their parents would have to let them stay in contact. Mm. Sounds simple enough, but there was just one hitch. Soon after Heather got pregnant, Brian lost interest in her and started dating someone else. Ooh. Ooh. Man. And now he claims the child may not even be his. Uh, oh, hey, yeah. that ain't right. Let's see if Montel can help straighten things out. Hey, you were 16 now, right? Mm -hmm. can, uh, here, I'll, I'll play a little scenario for you. How many girls in your school they go to school near you, have been told a game or run a game by a little boy the same age just to have you take your pants off? How many times does it happen? It happens in every school, every day. Boys will say anything they can. Oh, yes, darling, I'll get a job. Uh, I'll go to school. I'll keep my grades up. Just take your clothes off, and I'll do whatever you want me to do. Yes. Oh, let's have a baby. Yes. Let's get a grip here, and that's, wait, excuse me, that's not to say anything excuse bad about your me, son. Excuse me, that's Heather to Brian. Well, excuse me, excuse me, Brian's, Brian's... Brian, he's a male. He was, she was Brian's the sex, uh, sex organ did not jump she off his body, go down I'm the street not, by itself. I'm not saying that. Right. Brian didn't even know what a homosexual was until he was... Brian sure did know how to have sex, though, didn't he? Protected and unprotected. <laughs> He knew, how to, he knew how to put on a condom and then decide no, to take I it off. No, probably put it on for him. Are you kidding? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. up in there with us? Oh, Would you have a camera in their room? Hey, speaking of cameras, let's go to our live satellite hookup and see how Tom is enjoying his day at the Jerry Springer Show. Hey, Tom. Oh, oh Tommy. Yeah. Wow, Tommy, look out. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Oh, get her, get her, Tom. Oh, get her. Oh, man. That one's going to take a little while to sort out. Look at him looking at the camera. Tom, Tom, oh, man. Tom, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, good job, Tommy. That's right. Oh, that's right. Keep them apart there. Wow. Let's take a look at that one more time in slow motion, please. Check him out. Oh, yeah. Here he is. You'll see, she's going to sort of slip him here. He makes a bit of a rookie mistake. And, oh, look, look, she's right back in there. He thought he had her, but she's like a greased pig. She's right back into the pile. And watch him. Look at him. Here he goes. Look. Hi! Woo! All right. Good job, Tommy. Tuesday on Montel. Single women who date married men. Why do they do it? Some say they're just having a good time. Others enjoy sneaking around and hiding in closets. 
This Conan highlight features sexploitation director Doris Wishman making a rare TV appearance. This is the woman who claims she discovered Chesty Morgan. <laughs> Chesty has a 78-inch chest. How tough is it to discover someone like that? Anyway, the mastermind behind Nude on the Moon and Bad Girls Go to Hell doesn't like to sully her sterling reputation by appearing on the small screen. But desperate times call for desperate measures. Observe. You have never done a talk show ever until, until this moment right now. Why is that? Well, two reasons. Okay. One, I find your show very fascinating. Thank you. And secondly, and this is very Let's leave serious. it as fascinating. No. I'm no, 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 afraid no, no, to go. No, 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 no. This is my cat who was lost for nine weeks. Now, this is serious. This cat is the love of our lives, a very important member of the family. And I know the show airs in Florida, naturally, Miami, Carl Gables. The cat disappeared in Carl Gables. And we've done everything we can to get it back. And Let I me show the cat to the can people we, at can home. Can we zoom, zoom in? Yeah, zoom in on the cat. So basically, you're using my talk show to find your cat. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't sure there was a new low for us, but God love us, we found it. Just a minute. Yes? It's not a new low. No, I'm just kidding. I'm self-deprecating humor. <laughs> but this is very important. Now, wait a minute. Did she say she's from Coral Gables, Florida? Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. My mom lives in Coral Gables, and she recently lost her pet alligator, Rex. Huh. Oh. Who knows? Maybe oh. he and Doris's cat have become friends, like Milo and Otis, do you think? <laughs> Tuesday on Late Night, Conan mulls things over with funny man Alf Rankin. He's currently starring in the new sitcom Late Line. Hey, uh, Benny, can I get a cup of water or something, please? Sit tight. Hey, 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 Todd, Todd, take it easy, man. That's, that's Benny. He works for us. I asked him to bring me a cup of water. It's all right. Yeah, it's yeah, sure? yeah, it's okay. You're all right? Yeah, I'm all good. Right. Have a seat. All right. Thanks, Benny. Sit tight, unindicted co-conspirators. We got more highlights cooked to perfection. Later in the show, I'll be answering some viewer mail handwritten by one of our interns. Plus, a woman who must choose between the man she loves and dancing buck naked. But first, the amazing dog who chases cars. What do you think about Nikki following you to school every day? Uh, it's extraordinary. Most kids would um wouldn't really dream of uh, their dog following the school bus. If you. Welcome back. It's Talk Soup's first annual stage manager exchange show. With us today, Todd from the Jerry Springer Show. And on the set of Jerry, our own Tom McNamara from Talk Soup. Let's check in with him, shall we? Hey, Tom, how you doing? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, my oh, Lord yeah. have mercy. Tom, you're going to want to hold on. To oh, she's going for the shoe, Tom. Look at, look at, she's trying to slip you. Hold on to her. Get a grip, get a grip, get a grip. Hold the hands with her. Did you see that? Oh, man. Tom, look, Tom, come on. Hold her. Don't dance with her, for God's sake. Get on it, son. Ooh, yeah, Tom. Yeah. You and me proud, boy. Pressing forward. As you must know by now, I'm a huge fan of country and western music and its various practitioners. In fact, I've begun collecting C&W memorabilia. I've got some of Porter Wagner's toenail clippings, a few pounds of hair from Dwight Yoakam's favorite oh, yeah. brush, and, mm. and there's the jewel of my collection, a lump of Conway Twitty's earwax fashioned into a guitar. Oh. <laughs> uh, but what I wouldn't give for just one lock of Roy Clark's chest hair. <laughs> oh, don't you tease me, Crook and Chase. Let me say that, and I don't know how close you guys can get in on his microphone uh -oh. here or not, uh -oh. but uh, you are the first guest I think we've had on the show that had his microphone clipped to his chest hair. <laughs> that's strong, Roy. That, that's strong. That Clara, yeah, I, I'd take my time ripping that sucker off there. I really would. You know? Clara has, she said something about, I wonder if I've got, because, you know, Clara, Clara and I used to work together on Hee Haw. He does our wardrobe, yes. Yeah, and she used to, forever, she'd come in and go, <laughs> and she said, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, Just like old times today. That's right. You know, we could cut that off for you if you'd like. There's a plenty more where that went. <laughs> Later on, a lucky audience member got a little piece of Roy to go. I saw Linda swooning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> May I? Well, I just have to trim your microphone. I see. <laughs> All right. Did you hear that? What? We heard the crunch on the air. <laughs> Look at this. Linda, this is for oh, you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I 
These days, Roy's working as a spokesperson for the fast food chain Der Wiener Schnitzel. In fact, he's even made some changes to their menu. Check out the new chili chest hair footlong. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The food that flosses itself. And it's reasonably priced. Monday on Crook and Chase, get ready to tap your toes to the music of country newcomer Kevin Sharp. His debut album is titled Measure of a Man. I think we've all done that at one point in our lives. <laughs> when I was a kid, my pet turtle used to follow me to school. For all I know, he's still at it. <laughs> While Pokey deserves props for his can-do spirit, he's certainly no Nicky the Wonder Dog. Up next, CBS This Morning's Mark McEwen learns all about this talented canine. Mark. Ricky, now what do you think about uh, Nikki? Uh, look at her running next to the school bus. What do you think about Nikki following you to school every day? Uh, it's extraordinary. Most kids would, um, wouldn't really dream of uh, their dog following the school bus, not unless it would be too far. But I, I do know that she follows a lot of cars. Oh, she, that's a little dangerous, as people know. Are you ever worried about her? Maybe a uh, you know, dog shouldn't be playing in the road. You worry about that? Yeah, sometimes, only, but only when uh, oncoming traffic. Usually, she's always in the fields. Hey, Jolene, what do the other kids in school think about your dog uh, coming to school and following the school bus? They think it's interesting. Everybody likes her. Any chance that the, the, well, there we go. See, that's what I worry about, her running in front of that car. Any chance that they would let her ride on the bus to school every day as opposed to run behind it? Um, no, because she's scared of vehicles. She won't get in one All right. unless it's a car. Seconds after the cameras stopped taping, Nikki was blindsided by a tractor trailer. She may be history, but she's still a very good dog. A very good dog. Mm -mm. And only 99 cents. Wednesday on CBS This Morning, an interview with actress Renee Zellweger. The Jerry Maguire star of the new film now called A Price Above Rubies. Still to come, we'll announce the winner of our Talk Soup Clip of the Week. <laughs> no, it's not Titanic. Plus, two brothers fight over a heartless hoochie. But first, Gina Lee Nolan, come on down! So I went out in front of a hundred different crew and people and, and Bob Barker, and um, my tail is up. I'm totally exposed. In the world of rock and roll... Now it's time for our Talk Soup Quote of the Week. This week's quote comes from The Sally Show. Here's Knockers the Clown discussing her bizarre prop comedy fetish. Have you ever felt a rubber chicken? I mean, it's rib. <laughs> I know. Moving on. Recently, Daily Show host Craig Kilborn defied the authority of the FCC by drinking beer on camera. Oh. Well, sort of. You see, even a rebel like Craigers knows that some line should never be crossed. Here he is, tiptoeing along the boundary, separating comedy and criminal behavior. Hey, speaking of beer guzzling, I'm sure Tom's going to be knocking down a few on Rush Street after his day at the Springer Show. Isn't that right, Tommy? Oh! Hey, to oh, 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 yeah. hey Tom! Woo. Morty's no, mixing it up with the boys this time. No. Look at him. Oh, 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 he's, he's got him by the pants. Look at yeah. He's giving him a wedgie. Yeah. Way to go, wedgie. Tom. Wedgie. Oh, man, look at him go. Holy cow. Good work, Tom. Wow, can you believe this? Oh, man. He's talking to the camera. He's giving him a wedgie. He's a multi-talented man. Wednesday on The Daily Show, Craig will run around the studio chasing pink elephants. His crew will stage an intervention. He'll break down, confess he has a drinking problem, and then interview a celebrity guest. Before appearing on Baywatch, Carmen Electra perfected her acting talents, hosting MTV Singled Out. For Pamela Lee, it was the rigors of swimsuit calendar modeling. Up next, Keenan chats with the always Baywatchable Gina Lee Nolan. Before acting opposite Der Hasselhoff, she honed her skills in the most demanding training ground this side of the actor's studio. That's right, the set of Bob Barker's game show, The Price is Right. Do you ever feel silly doing doing this? Well, that's the... why I'm now on, on Baywatch. And not, <laughs> no, no, but at the time, I think that, you know, we had to do a lot of rehearsals and, and stuff, um, you know, before in front of like 100 people right. um, before each show. And there was one time I felt so ridiculous. I had, um, I showed a lot of the swimsuit stuff and the boats and all of that. Right. And um, I would wear my pantyhose. And I went up and went to the bathroom and, and um, my robe got tucked into my <laughs> pantyhose. So I went out in front of a hundred different crew and people and, and Bob Barker and um, my tail is up. 
my, I'm totally exposed so to you would everybody. So you would just ass out? Just and, yeah. I had no clue, and no one told me, and then, I, of course, I go up, and I was just, uh, the joke was definitely on me. It sure was. Interestingly enough, my most embarrassing moment also occurred on The Price is Right. I was in the audience, and they called my name out, and I came charging down the aisle, but I was so excited, my tube top accidentally came. Guys, guys, come on, what's going on over here? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just showing some of the fellas here how to put a sleeper hold on someone. Well, could you keep it down? I'm working over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on now, guys. Leave Todd alone. Let him do his job. Wednesday, Keenan yucks it up with comedian Dave Chappelle. Dave recently starred in the film Half Bake, which got three and a half bong hits in the latest Baked Potatoes video guide. Just ahead on the Talk Soup Weekly Wrap-Up, I'll sift through some viewer mail and then quite possibly read it. Plus, the latest poll on the results of Slick Willie's sex life. But first, a heartwarming wedding proposal. Aww. Them. When you're young and reckless. Welcome back to Talk Soup. I'm John Henson, and that's what we call a Chiron. Now I'm going to do what we refer to as a toss. When Farron didn't make the high school cheerleading squad, did she mope? Nay, she made a few simple adjustments to her favorite dance routine and landed a job as a stripper. These days, she's saving up those sweaty singles and putting them in a college tuition fund. In the following Jerry highlight, Farron's beloved Doug asks her to bubble wrap the G-strings and tuck them into the far corner of the attic. Will she listen? Let's find out. If the choice was to live at home um, and not strip, you know, not have to strip, wouldn't you rather do that? No. I'd rather live on my own and make my own living. What myself. about your relationship here with Doug? <laughs> what about it? Doug? I mean, oh. No, I mean, what do you mean by that? You what? What do you mean by that? Uh, how, long have you, how long have you known him? <laughs> uh, about six months. Do you have feelings for him? Of course. I'll step at Doug. What do you want to say to her? I want to ask you. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, well, yeah, I'm sure I'll, I'll marry you. <laughs> you stop stripping? Um, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. Believe it or not, Farron recently landed a college scholarship. I hear she'll be attending Carnegie Mellon's. Come on, it's funny! In fact, I understand she's getting a full ride, and so is the dean. Yeah, you love it, I know you do. She's paying for a BA with TNA. Come on, I'm on a roll! In high school, she graduated magna cum laude, they told her to quiet down. All right, okay, that's my bad. I got a little carried away there, I'm sorry. Sorry, everybody, my bad. Where the hell were you on that one, huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Thursday on Jerry updates on some of his favorite May-December stories. Find out what happened to a bunch of teenagers who date old geezers. Recently, Francis Ford Coppola staged a 25th anniversary reunion for the cast of The Godfather. Everybody showed up except for The Godfather himself, Mr. Marlon Brando. Seems the wild one would rather spend his time with his good buddies Baskin and Robbins. For more on Brando's ice cream cravings, here's Coppola on Conan. I, uh, of course, I'm, a, uh, as uh, just about everybody is, a huge uh, fan of the Godfather films. It's the 25th anniversary mm -hmm. of the uh, first Godfather movie, and they had a big get-together in, uh, I guess was it was in Los Angeles. No, and we all went in San Francisco. San Francisco. All, all the cast came back. Except for Brando. Was there, do you know why? There was a rumor that he didn't show up because he wanted $100,000. Well, I mean, you know... In uh, ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> You know, a true story of Marlon Brando actually used to keep incredible amounts of ice cream in his freezer, mm -hmm. but he would lock it with a chain and lock. 
so he wouldn't go at it. Why he kept it, I don't know. But the story is supposed oh, to be Oh, so that true. he couldn't get at right, it? Right, right. But the story is one night he couldn't stand and he went down with a gun and he shot the lock <laughs> off. <and laughs> oh, he, he had to get that ice cream, yeah. yeah. He wasn't kidding. In fact, Brando was fighting his ice cream urges while shooting another Coppola masterpiece, Apocalypse Now. The Cut! Cut! Marlon, come on! Not again! Oh. Boy, that was graphic. Thursday on Late Night, Conan puts the moves on actress Mimi Rogers. She's out on the promotional circuit for her new film, Lost in Space. It's got to be better than getting lost in cable. I'll tell you that. What feeling of Catholic guilt I'm experiencing can mean one of only two things. Either I'm going to give up lap dances for Lent, or it's time to read a little viewer mail. Hey, all right. I better get some singles. This week's letter comes to us from Gloria Hen of Los Angeles, California. She writes, Dear John, where do they find the people who break up the fights on Jerry Springer? Well, good question, Gloria. I've actually wondered that myself. Where do you find them, Todd? Well, uh, most of us are recruited from the nation's number one talk show, Security Guard School. Maybe you've seen, you know, the ads on late night TV. Stuck in a dead-end job? Bored with life? Interested in a high-paying career in television? Then the exciting world of talk show security may be for you. The DeGuy Institute has trained security guards for dozens of big-time talk shows, and we can train you. DeGuy will teach you how to search guests and audience members for concealed weapons. You'll learn how to avoid flying objects. Go in our talk show simulation booth and learn the right time to break up fights. No, 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 no. Eventually, you'll learn you can't break up a fight until it gets started. Why wait? Classes are starting now. I love it because I get to meet people. <laughs> Pick up the phone and call the DeGuy Institute today. I did. We don't just tell you what happened and where it... Please send your letter or question to Talk Soup E, P.O. Box 4897. Two. Los Angeles, California, Nina Double Lock 4 when Al Franken needed a title for his new series, I suggested Frankly Franken. But nobody listens to me, so they're calling the show Late Line. Whatever. Up next, Al gets chatty with the View crew. Here he is reviewing the results of some recent opinion polls. I got some new poll numbers. This oh, is great. an interesting thing. <laughs> uh, when Americans were asked, 1,200 respondents were asked, did the president have, do you believe the president had oral sex with Monica Lewinsky? 42% said yes, 41% said no, and 17% said they don't know. So what's interesting is these don't knows are very significant. So when they were asked, when these don't knows were asked, uh, have you ever had oral sex? 53% said yes, 28% said no, and 19% of the don't knows <laughs> did not know whether they had oral sex. Now, when those don't knows were asked, why don't you know whether you had oral sex, 12% uh, said it was too dark. <laughs> Uh, 61% six, said they were too drunk, <laughs> and 27% of the don't knows, uh, don't, don't know, know why they don't know. <laughs> so it's really, these polls, yeah. these polls are interesting. Well, obviously, President Clinton wasn't too happy about those polls, but here's a poll he was happy about. Oh, oh yeah, ah, that's yeah. right. I think he knows his target audience. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Wednesday on The View, brace yourselves for the insult humor of Don Rickles. He'll be on to ridicule Joy, Babs, and all the minorities in the audience. With all the warm water and tingling bubbles, jacuzzis are built for seduction. But there are special tips people should know before they engage in hot tub hanky-panky. Where are there? That's what the Loveline audience member in this clip wanted to know. Offering their ideas will be Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, and Diane, uh, what's her name? Okay, with having sex in a hot tub, 
how are you supposed to have safe sex with condom. all this? You're going to have yeah. to figure out a way to use a condom. Mm -hmm. And the condoms are, you know, as long as they're used properly, uh, which, you know, may mean you can't stay in the hot tub the entire time. Well, the, yeah, don't, don't have the guy put the condom on yeah, under a short. Under the water, and yeah. Under a trunk, the water. Right. for instance. Right. I mean, used properly. It, it's, it's a confident man, though, by the way, who puts <laughs> yeah. the condom on and then pulls the trunks on and then goes in there. I, I mean, Especially if you're just at a hotel or something. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's waiting a lot of around. strange wives' tales though, about or urban legends about hot tubs that you can't get sexually transmitted diseases or your mm -hmm. sperm count goes down because of the heat. I mean, it, it's it, all the rules of the game on land apply. There's no special circumstances. There's no uh, maritime birth control no. law or anything Nothing. like that? No. 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 Okay. And, but you do get to have a jet in your ass, which is something you don't get on land, right, Drew? Uh, I know you've experimented with that, but you won't go there. Yes. I have a book and Thank a whole God. lecture series coming out and surrounding that. Okay. Be on the lookout for that. Friday on Loveline, Dr. Drew and Adam welcome former Miss USA, Allie Landry. She's currently appearing in that Doritos laundromat commercial. I wish I was a Dorito. <laughs> Crunch. If you're going to cheat on your husband, at least do it with someone he trusts. That's Brandy's philosophy, which may explain why she chose to bed down her hubby's younger brother, Mike. And this cherry highlight, it's a family free-for-all. Here's your older brother. Yeah. He took you in, apparently during troubled times. Mm -hmm. uh, got you a job, let you stay in the house. Why would you mess around with his wife? Well, because he's a piece of I'm not here. Anyway, bottom line is, uh, if he had been taking care of business, I'd have been out of business. You know? Why, why, is, that, why is that your concern? I mean, if they're having problems in the marriage, was... let them work it out. Why are you sleeping with his wife? Okay. You don't give a about nobody but yourself. Let me answer the question. Just be quiet. Anyway. Make me be quiet. I'm right here. Okay. I'm right here. What's up, man? I'm right here. What's up? My Lord, what a melee. I wonder what our guest stage manager, Todd, from the Jerry Springer Show thought of that. Todd? Todd? Oh, oh poor guy. Looks a little homesick, doesn't he? Friday on Jerry, I have a wild sex job. And so do the panelists on Springer Show. Guests include a porn star and a prostitute. Coming up after the break, she's the big top of the big top. Knockers the Clown discusses her last three ring romance. We would do things like he would buy me a cake and I would, you know, I'd step in it and he'd eat it off my foot. I'd, or I'd sit in it and we would just have fun, you know. On a night where... We're going down for the final count. Well, folks, I thought I'd seen it all, and then I met Knockers the Clown. <laughs> Knockers the Clown. <laughs> this Sally guest gets turned on by a red rubber nose and a pie in the face. That's right, folks. I'm talking about clown sex. And I'm talking about our talk soup clip of the week. You talk about something, since there are a group of you, you talk about something called clown sex. What is clown sex? I coined that phrase. That's my phrase. Clown sex, um, well, that's like, I uh, find, um, like I dated one clown in particular for a long time, and, um, we would do things like he would buy me a cake, and I would, you know, I'd step in it, and he'd eat it off my foot, oh. and, or I'd sit in it, and we would just have fun, you know? of like see this is my face right and i would then like paint my face on him and he paint his and face hit on each me. other with that rubber chicken that you have in your hand have you ever have you ever felt a rubber chicken i mean it's ribbed <laughs> all right and, and uh plastic hot dogs all those crazy things you get in one of those stores <laughs> Moments later, Knockers lifted up her dress and 25 midgets ran out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Friday on Sally, an exclusive interview with a close friend of Mary Kay Letourneau. Mary is the teacher who made headlines for her affair with a 13-year-old boy. Not once, twice, no. she went back. Yeah. Pregnant, had a baby. Well, that's it for this edition of Talk Soup. Just a reminder to tune into our daily show every weeknight at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. We'll have a fresh half hour of highlights for you. Well, this brings our first annual Stage Manager Exchange program to a close. Todd, thanks for making the trip. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We leave you now with some final thoughts from Tom McNamara on his Jerry Springer experience. Bye now. Well, John, it's time for my final thought. I think one of my ribs is broken. Oh. It was a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard work here. Have a seat. Have a seat. John, I want to come home and do my job. Ha, ha, ha.